So, we're finishing this chapter, chapter 1. So, regarding power, we discussed this, that eventually you have, the, in the design of the system, you have the CMOS IC technology, we hit the power wall, and basically you need to find ways to be able to uh, improve performance. And in the measurement of performance, there are two types, we have uh, response time and throughput. Now, in the case of multiprocessors, uh, usually if you introduce multiprocessing or multiple cores, you are now focusing on uh, maximizing throughput. Okay? Kasi marami ka na eh. Uh, mabagal yung clock rate niya, pero you have uh, more cores. So, in a way, you increase throughput. Okay? And it requires, of course, in the perspective of the programmer, it will require additional uh, knowledge and in a way, additional problem okay, because of uh, additional issues when it comes to programming. So nowadays, uh, unless you're a web programmer, or web developer, you don't care about multi-core uh, multi processing. So you care more on, uh, let's say, user interface, user experience. But if you're a systems programmer or you are into, let's say, bioinformatics or scientific computing, modeling and simulations, you will need to uh, understand uh, this multi-core multi uh, stuff. And the main issue is, if you have multiple cores, you just, you just you don't have a, just a single core, uh, you need to be able to schedule tasks among the different cores. And then, uh, probably you need to be able to load balance the cores so that no one core is uh, filled with so many tasks while the other cores are doing nothing. So you have to do some load balancing. Another issue might be, yes, communication and synchronization, right? I mentioned last time, uh, during the early days wherein you only have one processor core, right? When you want to do multiple uh, uh, processing, right? in terms of communication, so during the early days, uh, we're actually using what you call the message passing interface, MPI. So this is, a, this one, this is P, Pentium 4, P4, P4. Okay. They are different individual CPUs. We connect them via a local area network. We call this a V1 cluster. Okay. Then the exchange of information uh, will be done over the network. Right? Now, the problem with that is since the data, for example, you're trying to compute the sum of an array. Right? You are trying to compute the sum of a very large array. Uh, in MPI programming, we split the data into different parts and then assign this portion here, assign this portion here, etc., etc. But eventually, you have to return that to the master right? to get the final sum of the array. And that will involve uh, communication here. This act, since lumabas pa siya sa computer, may time, ano yan, may time limitation yan. Right? If you're using, for example, uh, fast ethernet, uh, 100 Mbps, so yun yung time niya. Pero nowadays, if you have i7 or Xeon processors, maraming cores yan. You have multiple cores in one unit. Sometimes you don't need to go over the network. You can simply perform the processing inside. Right? And the distance between them, since they are on a single chip, their communication will be much faster. Right? So that's the idea. But in case hindi kaya nito, uh, in the case of alibaw, yung mga simulation of earthquake or predicting weather, hindi yan. Wala ka namang processor na sobrang dami na nandito. Let's say, siguro meron kang mga 64 uh, core. So, hindi, hindi yung kakayanin yung sa simulation. So, you still need additional uh, computers or servers, basically. And ang um, isang technique na ginagawa nila is to improve the network connectivity. Instead of using ordinary uh, Ethernet network, they use what uh, you call uh, infi uh, InfiniBand. Right? 
So nung nag-ano ako, nung ties ako, nagulat ako ang 60 GBP, uh, GBPS yung ano, yung transfer niya. Okay. Kasi Infiniband yung ginagamit niya dito sa cluster. Eh, wala tayong ganun pa. But that's actually one way to do that. So if you have multiple processors like this, there are additional issues for the developer that I must consider. Okay. And yung iba ngayon, kung ayaw nila ganyan, meron specialized CPU, nandiyan na yung GPU. So nakamit pa lang yan dyan, data parallel problems, parallel processing pa rin yan. So it's also part of the architecture. Okay. So benchmarking. Okay. Uh, benchmarking is important uh, because it allows you to compare the performance of uh, different uh, workloads. Okay? Uh, so we have a standard uh, uh, benchmarking uh, benchmark called SPEC. Okay? And uh, actually, meron, hindi na siya yung latest, yung 2006, meron ng latest. Okay? So what it does is it runs uh, several programs on a system and then measures the certain values called the spec ratio. Okay? And uh, it's called the performance ratio. And that is used to quantify the, <coughs> quantify the performance of a machine. Okay? So uh, it's actually a standard or a community-driven uh, <coughs> group. Okay? which provides a set of workloads to test the performance of the CPU, the I.O., or, web, or actually anything na ginagamit. For example, sa business, meron din. Okay? Business application. And usually, to be able to uh, get the quantified performance or uh, benchmark, okay? you, have, you use the arithmetic, uh, geometric mean to get the uh, value. Okay. The advantage of using the geometric mean is that umbaga fixed siya. Okay. Hindi maapektuhan yung performance depende sa ano, sa isa sa machine na niran mo. Okay. So here's an example. Uh, so uh, this illustration uh, shows how the Intel Core i7 920 uh, processor is being tested. So what it does is this, uh, this uh, benchmark. Niraran niya itong mga program na ito okay, with these characteristics and then the spec ratio is computed and then the final uh, geometric uh, mean is the result of that uh, benchmark. Okay. So the higher the benchmark, the, the higher the value, the better the report. So uh, are you familiar with this? Uh, so these are the tools that are being run and then the, the performance are measured. Okay. So per, you know per is a scripting language. Before Python, uh, we were using per. Okay. Uh, BZ2, are you familiar with this tool? It's a compression algorithm similar to TAR or ZIP. Of course, GCC. So ang ginagawa dyan, nilaran niya yung GCC. Minimeasure na yung mga properties na ito. Okay. And then to get the spec ratio. And for this set of uh, for this set of uh, programs, yun yung kanya kapuhang value. Okay. So pwede mo siyang iran sa i5 or sa AMD. Ano ba tawag sa processor ng AMD? High-end processor ng AMD? Ra Ryzen ba? Okay. So Ryzen. So compare mo. Iran mo to sa Ryzen. Ano yung value ng magiging to? So actually, binibili mo to eh. Yung, yung benchmark na to, you have to purchase this. Kasi kung ikaw yung manufacturer, gusto mong testingin yung product mo against this benchmark para malaman mo kung ano yung advantage ng product mo compared with the other processors, for example. Okay, so, yun. So, ito ay parang generic. Ang purpose ng benchmark is more of a generic, uh, generic uh, way to assess the uh, performance. Okay? You can also have power. Okay, so, pwede rin naman yan for uh, benchmarking power levels, okay? So, for example, you have uh, this one. Okay. Cion is usually used for uh, 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 data ser uh, se uh, dito? servers for uh, data centers. So, tinan natin. Meron tayong, meron tayong ganyan. Eh.
Meron nag-donate sa atin na alumni ng isang Huawei server na may CEO niya tayo. Okay. So, CEO nga ba ito? Ito, ito. Okay. So, it's an Intel CEO uh, machine. So, installed uh, uh, Ubuntu 8.04 here. And, uh, right. How many cores does this machine uh, has? 32. 32 nga ba? 32 GB or... Kina natin. Uh, Mag-tap na lang tayo. So, 32. So far, the, this is so far the machine that I have played here, around here, I at ICS with this number of uh, cores. And you see, wala, 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 zero, wala gumagamit. Okay? Nag-consume ng power, pero wala, 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 wala load, as you can see in that example, right? So, this is just an example of a uh, uh, powerful machine. So, dito rin nakalagay yung, ano, yung GPU, uh, and in, uh, GeForce RTX na Titan ito rin nakakabira so uh, okay Amdahl's Law okay, so uh, Amdahl's Law is uh, a way to assess whether the improvement uh, on a certain portion of uh, a particular uh, program will affect the overall performance of the system uh, so improving an aspect of the computer and expecting a proportional improvement in the overall performance. So, uh, an example, uh, example, if you have a program, right, uh, that, uh, that performs multiplication, right, and you would, uh, you have a program that uses multiplication, right, and as a designer, uh, the current performance of uh, the program, uh, uh, the total execution time of the program is 100 seconds. Right? But the multiplication part consumes 80 seconds of that 100% uh, 100 second execution. Right? So how much improvement in multiply performance to get a 5%? Overall performance. So the question here. So uh, you focus on the multi. Parang di ba sa computation? Multiplication is quite expensive, right? And it consumes 80 seconds out of the 100 seconds. Now, if you are asked to design, uh, how can you can you improve multiply a uh, multiply operation so that get five times the 100 uh, seconds? Parang gusto mong gawing 20. Right? So you see this equation. It really that uh, it can't be done. Right? So you can't improve the multiplication, right? the performance of the multiplication, in order to uh, obtain the target that you want for the overall performance. So again, the idea is to make the common case fast. So yung lagi ginagamit yun yung improve. Okay? So it does not necessarily mean that. Uh, by focusing on just a single uh, attribute, uh, you will be able to improve the overall performance. So this is on the Amtas. Okay? So that's one pitfall. Okay? Uh, fallacy. Okay? So yung fallacy naman dito is something to do with uh, the uh, relationship between improving performance and power. So so there's always a uh, relationship between uh, performance and power. Hindi ibig sabihin na hindi busy yung CPU ay hindi na nagko-consume ng power yung machine. Okay? So that's one uh, uh, fallacy. Okay? So consider designing processors to make power proportional to the load. So there is a relationship between the uh, performance and the load. 
and of course the power. Okay, so this one, uh, another pitfall. So ito yung MIPS is a common measure of performance, but again, it does not consider everything. Uh, ang pinaka ultimate goal talaga is yung big picture na CPU tayo kanina. But for some, uh, for some literature or references, minsan ginagamit nila yung uh, billions of instructions per second. Okay. So for example, MIPS. Meron mga benchmarking tool na ginagamit yung MIPS. But however, uh, dahil nga sa ating big picture, it is not always the case. So it is. It does not account for the differences in the instruction architecture and the complexity of the instructions. Right. So for to end this chapter, okay, So cost uh, per performance is improving. Cost per performance is improving due to the underlying technology development. Uh, hierarchical layers of obstruction is present in the system, in the design. Right. Instruction architecture refers to the hardware and software interface, okay? And it is the execute, execution time which is the best performance measure. And power is a limiting factor, okay? And instead use parallelism to improve the performance, okay? So this ends this chapter, okay? Now we're not going to uh, go to chapter two and chapter three in this, in this course, okay? Uh, chapter 2 uh, is actually parang 131 na rin to. Dinidescribe nito in detail kung yung instructions and architecture ng ARM V8 which is being used in this uh, in this textbook, okay? So we'll refer to this later, pero when when we go to the next chapter kasi may reference siya dito, but we're not going to go into this into detail. But yung discussion natin later will just focus on some aspect of the instruction and architecture. Now, for this uh, arithmetic for computers, this should have been taken in 130, okay, and 131, okay. So the different operations, etc. So, yeah, okay. So, example multiplication. How it is done in hardware. Pero we'll discuss the uh, we'll dis we'll not discuss in detail here. Kung paano siya implement, but uh, I assume na, na, disk, na I mean, familiar na kayo dun sa uh, mga operations. Okay? We'll not discuss the details of siguro sa, la, sa lang, baka discuss nyo to kung paano gagawin yung multiplication for example. But we'll not discuss this in the lecture. Okay? So, we'll discuss this uh, in uh, in the quantry one. Okay? So, we now move on to the actually the meat of Comsai one three two, which is designing a processor. So you build uh, the processor on top of the knowledge that you have regarding uh, one thirty digital design and one three one, which is the instruction set architecture for actually for x eighty six or x eighty six dash sixty four. Okay, now. The purpose now is to understand how do you design a processor. Okay. So uh, the progression will be something like this. Uh, during the early days, you learn to program in Python. It's an interpreted language, print hello world. Then you learn to, to write programs in C. So print F and then perform some operations. And you learn, you, you learn that the C program is actually compiled into assembly language. And assembly language is actually part of the instruction set architecture of, of the machine. And if you have an x86-64 I, ISA, Intel and AMD can have different implementations of, those, of, those, of that ISA. Right? And now, we go into the detail of how are these instruction set architecture implemented at the low level by designing a processor. Okay? Now, during the discussion, early discussion, uh, the processor, there are two main components inside the processor. You have the data path, which involves the computations, and the control unit. Right? So that is what we're going to discuss in this uh, chapter. And there are, there are two stages, two phases in this chapter. The first one is designing a simple uh, processor 
which completes instructions in a single clock cycle, and the other one is uh, using pipelining to improve the performance. Right? So we'll discuss first the first one, the basic uh, processor architecture. Right? And uh, based on the quiz, the CPU performance factors okay, is basically influenced by the instruction count, so the ISA and the compiler, and the program itself, and the CPI and the cycle time. So they call that CPI, clock cycle per instruction, usually pertains to uh, a class of instruction. So you have a CPI for arithmetic instructions, you have CPI, average CPI for uh, data movement instructions, and another CPI for branch instruction. And this is deter these are determined by CPU hardware. So, if you want to, if, kung developer, uh, kung, ano ka, kung compiler writer ka, okay, ang priority mo is to minimize the instruction count. Okay? TCC, GCC, you, you, you see the point there. And if you are a hardware designer, you're interested in the CPI and the cycle time. Now, in the textbook, it says there that you have the leg V8 uh, implementation. So you have the uh, ARM uh, architecture and then subset with the leg V8 uh, implementation, which is a simplified version and a more uh, dalawa ang di discuss yung sabi ko kanina simplified version ng uh, implementation ng uh, leg V8 and uh, a more realistic uh, pipeline version, right? Now, in the discussion of this, in the discussion in this chapter, we're going to look at how to implement these three, uh, these three classes of instructions. So you have the memory, right? uh, memory reference instruction. You have load uh, and store. This is the equivalent of MOV in uh, in uh, x86. You have arithmetic and logical instructions and so and more and. Uh, shift left, shift left, and then uh, the control transfer uh, branch uh, is equal and uh, jump. Okay. So this one is conditional transfer. So when the jump lang siya pag equal or this one is the unconditional branch. So we specify an offset to jump. Okay. So that is how. Uh, these are the, kumbaga, okay. you will be asked to design a processor that supports this. How do you do that? Okay. Actually, in your project in Kongsai 132, you're going to do something like this. Right? So you start with uh, a set classes of instruction and you're going to implement that in, uh, to create a processor for that in VHDL. Okay? That's the idea. So let's recall uh, instruction execution. Okay? How are instructions executed? So recall the knowledge in Kongsai uh, 1v1. So you have the program counter, okay? which actually uh, contains the address of the uh, next instruction to be executed. Okay? So you have an instruction method. Remember everything, the memory and the, uh, the instruction and the data should be placed in the main memory. Okay? So the program counter will contain the address of the next instruction to be executed. Okay? And then you also have, these are the main components. You also have registers. Okay? So uh, you have uh, usually in, a, in an ISA, you have a set of registers uh, that you can use. Okay? Uh, registers are fast storage devices, right? Discussed, uh, 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 I think, in 130. Uh, we'll try to, we will go back to that, those topics later, okay? And if you have a, coll a collection of registers, then you have a register file. Okay? And uh, usually, you read the uh, registers, right? So for every instruction, right? For every instruction like uh, load and store, okay? Ang kailangan mo dyan is the instruction, instruction word, okay? Tapos, based on the instruction word, you're 
going to uh, read contest of the register and depending on the class of instruction iba yung gagawin mo so if your if your class of instruction is arithmetic operations okay, you need to calculate the let's say add you need to calculate the result okay, and then you have to specify kung saan ang ilalagay or you can also perform branch uh, target address computation ALU. Okay. And if you're, let's say, load and store, right, you need to access the memory. Right? And then you implement the program counter to move to the next instruction. Uh, can you, uh, do you understand this mechanism? Okay. The uh, fetch the code execute cycle in uh, the processor. Okay? So, Given this instruction execution okay, mechanism, how do we uh, design a uh, processor for that? So we start with called the data path. Okay? So paano natin to integrate using different functional units? So usually we use that use, we create that using a a diagram, okay? with uh, representative boxes as the different functional units. So, ano yung mga functional units na, kahit na meron dito? Okay. Uh, the first one is the program counter. Right? So this is the program counter. Okay. And this is the instruction memory. Okay. Now, uh, this is just a logical, uh, logical visualization of the memory. Notice na hiwala yung instruction memory, hiwala din yung data memory. Diba? Pero normally, you only have one chip for the memory. Okay? But for the case of the, in the case of the design, logical view, they can be treated as, uh, as uh, different memory areas. Kung baga, address lang naman yan eh. You can think of this as this is the data section of your program, and you can think of this as the code section of your program. You get the idea? So the program counter uh, will contain the address of the next instruction to be executed. And that address is located in the me instruction memory functional unit. Right? So this functional unit, in terms of circuitry, you supply that address to the uh, instruction memory. And as the output of that instruction memory, you will get the instruction. Right? In the instruction word, which will be interpreted later. Okay? Now, if, and the instruction may need to use registers. Right? Usually, for example, if you have uh, at KXBX, uh, in, in x86. So this is an x86 instruction okay, at axbx. So it will need as parameter of the instruction register number and register number here. Okay? So it depends on the ISA kung ilan yung architect, uh, kung ilan yung register na go provide niya. For example, sa x86 64, meron tayong general purpose registers, yung mga R RAX and then R12 yata. Okay? And then, so, ito yung mangyayari. Okay? So, you will need to read registers from the register file. Okay? And depending on the instruction class, okay? so halimbawa, uh, addition, My input dito sa ALU okay, that will uh, be used to compute the uh, sum. So, halimbawa, uh, AXBX. Okay. So, add AXBX. So, AXBX. Okay, papasok yan dito. May output siya. Usually, dalawa ka siya. Dalawang register. Okay. AXBX. Now, saan i-store ang sum? Pag ganito ang instruction sa uh, uh, 131. Sunny is storing some AX, di ba? So, ito yung AX, ito 
yung Vx, similar siya, right? So, yung value nila, since this is a sequential, oh, yeah, sequential circuit ito, pupunta yan dito, okay? Tapos, babalik siya dito, yung data, okay? And then, the value will be based on the, sa Ax na yung malalala. Okay? So, that's uh, one way to look at it. Okay? Now, after the execution of the instruction, you need to proceed to the next instruction, di ba? So normally, you have this program counter here, okay? And uh, these, are, these are also ALUs, okay? So specifically, nagaan lang siya, okay? So, uh, magaan lang siya ng 4, and then, kukunin na yung address ng next instruction. Do you have the idea? Now, in the example in the textbook, yung architecture niya simple lang, okay? Fixed with yung ano niya, uh, uh, fixed length yung kanyang instruction. Ibig sabihin, 32 bits, okay? Kaya 4 bytes yung lagi niya na hindi okay? There are architecture, ito ay SIS, okay? Ah, uh, uh, RISC, reduced instruction set computer. Kaya kung baga, simple lang, yung fixed length. Unlike in x86-64, variable length. Move instruction, mamaya ang nakakita nyo, minsan mahaba, minsan may kilang. Okay. And then, yan, pumunta yun dito, and then, uh, depende rin sa, ano, sa instruction, baka may jump instruction yan, or branch instruction, pwede siyang mag-add ng offset dito, pumunta sa ibang lugar. Okay. You get the idea? So, the main function is are the program counter, the instruction memory, uh, the register file, the data memory, ALUs for basic operations, and then at, uh, these are actually ALUs that supports add operation only. Ito, maraming operation na pwede ko rin. Add, okay. And one thing that you will notice is, uh, ito mga junction na to. Okay. So these junctions seem to be, uh, kumbaga nag-merge sila from different inputs, okay? But hindi naman pwede yun. That can't, uh, we can't do that. So we need to find, we need to insert additional circuitry in these junctions to be able to select which one, ano yung padadaanin mo, okay? Diba? Parang sa ano, parang sa traffic, okay? Hindi naman yung pwede, naka-on sila pareho, tapos gulusot sila dyan. Kailangan, Meron ka parang traffic enforcer dyan na sila tayo. Sino yung dadaan? Sino yung hindi dadaan? Dyan kayo papasok yung multiplexer. Okay. So in a way, sisingitan mo lang yan ng multiplexer. Okay. And para man, uh, recall the idea of multiplexer, parang selector lang yun okay. sa 130. Okay. So when you do that, you can now have uh, this more complex uh, design. Now, in addition to the data for the data path, okay? in addition to the data path, okay? and para malaman mo kung ano yung gagawin niya, you need to introduce a form of control, control unit. Ito na yung sinasabi yung patina. Na yung processor, meron siya control unit, tapos yung kanya yung data path. And yung mga junction kanina, nilagyan na natin ng multiplexer. And then multiplexer dito, okay? and multiplexer dito. Okay? And ito yung control signal. Uh, so 130, meron kayo yung ginawa ba ito, di ba? Wala? Parang table, root table. So, yeah. so this is now a more complete view of the processor na nagsusupport nito ang operation na to. So, ang, ang goal natin is to design a processor that supports these instructions. Okay. How do we do that? Okay. We establish the data path, okay. and then we get the control. Okay. So, ang mangyayari dyan, depende sa instruction, okay. depende sa instruction, pupunta okay. yan sa control unit, meron siya pa ni activate na signals lahat 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 so 7 outgoing lines siya yung mag-dedictate 
kung alin dito sa mga ibang fashion na yun ista yan, yung kanyang i-activate. Okay. So, uh, uh, so, try nyo ano, i-internalize itong ginagawa ni Kong 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 I-interpret yung, yung depende sa opcode, i-interpret yung ng control unit, meron siyang mga, yung iba dyan naka-on, yung iba dyan naka-off, depende sa instruction. Once in zero scan naman yan. So remember, once in zero scan to, ha? Okay? So, meron ka lang actually yung table, oh, ito yung opcode. Pag ito yung opcode, naka-on to, naka-off to, naka-off to, naka-off to, naka-off to. Ganun lang basically okay. yung idea ng control unit. And, for every clock cycle. Remember, when it comes to a clock tick that uh, uh, performs, that types the, uh, the execution of the instruction. Okay? So, other questions about this? Uh, nyo ba? So, as a review, logic design basics, the, the information basically in the computer is nothing more than ones and zeros. So, come to think of it, uh, what's in zeros lang na naiintindihan niya, paano niya niya nagawa yung computation, dapat may explain niyo yan sa ano, pamangkin niyo na five, year, five years old. Paano gumagana yung computer dito, tita? Ito yung nangyayari. Okay. What's in zeros lang yan? Atanong sila, paano nangyayari? What's in zeros lang? On, off lang. Because of this digital design. Okay? So, one wire per bit, uh, multi-bit data encoded on multi-wire buses, okay? So, you can, uh, yung mga maakapal dyan, uh, ito, ito, pwede mo more than one bit, okay? So, when you group them together, you get buses, okay? And in one, ano, in one thirty, there are two types of uh, circuits that you have to design. You have combinational and so combinational just performs operation on the data, right? And the output is a function of the input. An example is the ALU. The design by the ALU or other or uh, ripple carry other sa ano sa 130. So these are examples of combinational circuits, right? Some inputs and you produce the output, right? And the state is it stores information. So yung mga D flip flop. SR flip flop, JK flip flop. Meri ata ang ano dito is slides ni Ma'am Riza. Hindi ko sa kanya para maalala ma maano niyo. Uh, maganda yung mga slides ni Ma'am Riza. Eh. Winner nga siya ng ano, best lecture slide. Ah, uh, example natin dito. Siguro ito, ah... Uh, oh, naalala niyo pa ito. Highly animated nga yung kanyang mga ano, slides. Alalanya apa tu? Counters, right? We have the clock, JT flip clock, right? Time timer, right? So yeah. Ah, isen tu saya nyu, baka para ano, para ma merindu nyu, right? So you will see later. Actually, in your in your lab in BHDL, yang timing, yang GTK wave na output, tu yang kita nyu, right? Ada timer tu yang ada. Ano yung values niya? So, once and zeros lang naman yan. Okay? So, Saan na ba tayo? Okay? So, yung dalawang, ano, dalawang klase ng circuits or elements. Right. And for uh, combinational elements, these are the common cases. So you have the end gate, okay, a logical end, okay, uh, other, okay. So yung add kanina, 
multiplexer. So ito yung ano, ito yung siningit kanina doon sa mga junction, okay? Yung multiplexer. So yung multiplexer in addition to the inputs, unlike here, itong dito siningit yung multiplexer, di ba? Okay? So may dalawa siyang input, galing dito tapos galing dito, okay? Now, in a multiplexer, you need to specify a selector here. Okay? Para sabihin niya kung ano yung palulusutin niya. Okay? So, some form of traffic enforcer. Okay? Pag, 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 pag zero siya, ito yung palulusutin mo halimbawa. Pag one siya, ito yung palulusutin mo halimbawa. Ito yung ibig sabihin na. Okay? That's the multiplexer. And uh, the ALU, so you have Y, a function of... Uh, uh, the inputs A and B uh, yung outputs sa sum okay? for the sequential elements so I've shown this a while ago so this is an example registers okay? stores data in a circuit okay? you have the clock signal okay? now the question is this is an example of a DQ flip clock okay? uh, so this is the clock key how do you uh, when do you update that, uh, the values so normally you have edge trigger, positive edge trigger. So ito yung clock tick, so one cycle. So if you pataas niya, so doon mo lang ira-write yung value. It's the input, it's the input. Right? You get the idea? So that is important para magkaroon ng synchronization ngayon yung ano, yung pag-grid ng data. Kasi baka ang mangyari, pag hindi ka nag-agree dun sa uh, pag-update, okay, pwede, di ba yung mabasa mo kaysa dun sa simulat. Okay. So ito, binagalan niya na yung binabasa mo dyan ay yung talagang ano, na, na, naisulat na. Okay, you get the idea? Okay. So these are the building blocks of uh, so this is for reading. Now, with write control, okay, uh, magra-write lang siya pag naka-set itong bit na ito, pag naka-enable siya, or naka-assert. Okay. Uh, the loop on na naka-assert yung write, uh, write control, saka lang siya mag-assert. Pag hindi naka-assert, kahit magkaroon pa siya ng, ano, magkaroon pa siya ng positive uh, edge dito, yung plug-in, hindi zero siya, wala siyang gagawin. Okay. Pero pag naka-assert siya, hindi siya. Okay? Uh, you get the idea? So, yeah, one. 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 Uh, looking at building the uh, building the uh, processor for the three classes of instructions na did we discuss kanina. Okay, so please submit your paper for the quiz and then uh, we'll see you. I'll see you next meeting.